morning, Floss Two. This is Mariam. My pronouns are she, her. You may know me as Marumi Crafts uh, on Instagram or as Marumi Designs on Gumroad. Um, uh, this is my very first Floss Tube. Welcome to my Floss Tube. I don't know how often I'm going to do this, but um, I was encouraged uh, by a couple of the stitchy friends to start a Floss Tube especially now that I'm designing um, to share not only uh, my uh, whips and my progress on different projects but also to share my design process as well so welcome I am new to this I'm a little nervous um, I'm not really good at speaking in front of camera so we'll see how this goes um, all right so a little bit about myself i live in chicagoland area i'm originally from iran i immigrated here now uh, over a, a dec decade ago i think it was like yeah 14 years ago maybe a little bit more i don't remember um uh yes so i have master in, in counseling psychology i'm a clinical um counselor mental health counselor by profession so my job is really stressful on a day-to-day -day basis i do coaching i work for for a nonprofit organization here in chicagoland um, and that means that i work with a lot of different individuals on day-to-day -day basis who have a lot of issues so um, when i come home or when i'm those days that i work from home uh, between working with different participants I um, do need to detach and do something to relax myself um, I started the stitching um, after a pandemic so um, I've been a crafter my whole life um, my, I'm co I come from a family of crafters and artists um, on my father's side my grandma um, did a lot of quilting. I actually will share a piece of her work that I have uh, with you later on. And um, uh, she did a lot of quilting and uh, sewing. And she did a lot of sew by hand. She loved the process. She was a patient woman. I'm not that patient. <laughs> um, and on my mother's side, uh, my grandmother did a lot of knitting. Um, crocheting, sewing, um, so a lot of different craft. Uh, she did a lot of needlework as well. My mom did needlework. Um, so when I, I was growing up, I started actually crafting when I was, if I'm not mistaken, and if the story is true, from the age of three. <laughs> I know it's a little strange. So I started knitting from the age of three. It was a way for me to improve my hand-eye coordination and uh, be able to focus on something and it actually worked <laughs> I was an ancient uh, anxious kid so a lot of my early uh, knitting projects you can see like as I go the tension rises and uh, um, it's really tight uh, all the pieces are super tight um, and I can see the progress <laughs> over the years and how I, um, I was able to relax a bit through crafting of different sorts. So I've tried a lot of different crafting, but somehow I skipped cross stitch altogether. So I did tons of different kind of needle work, needle art. Um, I did embroidery. I, um, uh, I did a lot of different like tapestry work and um, a lot of work with different jewels and stones and stuff like that but I never actually did cross stitch um, I have done knitting a uh, little bit of like quilting but it, it never stuck I, I never liked it that much um, and uh, I also did macrame I did um, pottery I did oh gosh so many things a lot of um, coloring, a lot of paper art. Um, I did a lot of those kind of things um, over the years. Um, and uh, I did embroidery for years um, when I was a teenager. 
but I avoided cross-stitch maybe because I had the time I was living in, in, in Iran and the cross-stitch that we were uh, you know we knew it was more of like a traditional old school now cross-stitch that is used for practical use so it's not an art piece per se as a lot of other crafts actually are seen the same way in Iran um, that it's it's a practical thing you make it you make it pretty but you actually use it so these are all done on everyday items and then you use them and it's not they're not really precious um, so there were a lot of like those kind of like there were the dissolvable kind of like a red thing that you will stick to any fabric and you could cross stitch on top of it so um, there were a lot of like uh, stitching on um, bags and uh, different clothing items and um, sheets and tablecloth and all, the, all of that and I was not into that I was not into that at all um, at the time I was doing embroidery and I loved to see the finished pieces as a piece of art so I did a lot of different pieces and I gifted them I think I actually kept only one piece of all my embroidery and um, I can say a majority of my family members have at least one of my embroidery pieces in their house um, or at least had I don't know if they, they all kept them <laughs> or not um, so yeah that's uh, that's about me so I in 2020 I first um, during the lockdown I first started with diamond painting that's another craft that I'm doing now you can see a lot of my finished pieces all around um, that's another hobby that I enjoy and I will be sharing some of it not a lot when I have like a finished canvas on this channel um, but it will be mainly this channel will be mainly a floss loop so I'll, I'll be mainly focused on cross stitch um, one of the people that I was following and watching their videos on YouTube um, was Rachel Ray and she both did videos for um, diamond painting and also she had a floss tube so one day I was like really curious like what is this floss tube so I started watching it and I basically watched months like because I started diamond painting in April of 2020 and I did not buy anything cross stitch related until December of 2020 so I've been watching floss tube for a while and then one day I, I decided to just give it a shot and see how I feel about it um, I was worried that maybe because of the counting nature of it I'll be overwhelmed so I started with a stamped like canvases um, so I thought this is like closest to diamond painting it's easy it's it doesn't need a lot of counting I'm not gonna mess it up as long as I know what floss to match with what symbol on the, the canvas I'll be fine um, so that's what I did I started with that and then I realized in one of the videos that someone posted that the company I was buying from and a lot of similar companies that they do like these stamped cross stitch projects are not really um, they don't really care about um, um, copyright law or any of that of course there are Chinese companies or Russian companies and a lot of them their laws there is different so they didn't need to follow what American copyright um, rules and restrictions was um, so they were doing their own thing so they were just making cross stitch uh, projects from anything and everything without getting permission from the actual uh, creator the original designer um, so I uh, that was like the push that I needed to jump into uh, you know jumped out of stamped cross stitch and I started working on countered cross stitch and I never looked back uh, I, I I really love it um, this is something that really relaxes me so I rarely go a day without um, cross stitching or diamond painting or both 
<laughs> so I need some um, some way of like some release um, some way of like expressing myself in an artistic way as well as um, stabbing something <laughs> um, without it being a person <laughs> in a safe manner basically um, so uh, yeah and in uh, I think January yeah it was January of 2022 that I started um, designing and I released my first design Persian Love and then uh, I've been uh, consistently uh, releasing designs ever since um, my plan is to upload one um, floss tube a month moving forward um, uh, that like covers all my Webs. I don't have a lot of whips. I used to be monogamous stitcher. Now I'm like branching out, <laughs> branching out, <laughs> and I'm working on um, a few. But compared to a lot of other people, my num the number of whips that I have is really low, mainly because I don't have patience, and I really need to like go through a project as fast as I can because that there was no nothing matching that like satisfaction of having um, a finish so I'm, I'm craving that finish all the time so a lot of times I'm um, uh, you know working on larger project but also I start a lot of smaller projects during the month just to have a finish that month <laughs> I cannot go without a finish a month <laughs> at least my goal is to have two finishes a month this year. Um, I've been keeping up with that and going beyond that a little bit so far. So I'm, I'm feeling good about it. The same for my diamond painting. I, my goal is to finish two canvases a month. Um, I had like a, I went overboard in the past couple of years since I started diamond painting and I bought a lot of canvases. So I want to I wanna work through them and um, lower the number. Basically, I don't want to have like a whole stash of them. I want to like go through them, work them, and so I can buy new things. Basically, um, one of the other reasons why I want to go through my uh, diamond painting stash is because uh, one of the companies that I used to work a lot of canvases from, um, they are um, now. Um, offering um, a license Harry Potter, Harry Potter um, canvases and um, I I don't want to support the company anymore so uh, as a result what I want to do is I want to go through all the canvases I have from that company and work them because I spend money on it I don't want to throw them away so I'm going to work on, on them but I'm not going to promote the company I'm going to just promote the artists that I'm actually the, the artwork has been turned into diamond painting because these are all licensed um, diamond paintings um, as far as cross stitch goes um, I have a series that I will finish uh, designing this year hopefully and um, on top of that I want to do a, a, a sampler closer to my birthday which is in January so at the end of year I I'm hoping to finish um, a larger size sampler and uh, also to have um, at least one or two extra um, releases on top of the series that I have this year. All right, enough of that. So let's, um, let's go through the whips that I have so far right now. And then, um, then we go over the finishes. I, I thought that I, it would be good to share the finishes that I have so far this year. All right, so I'm gonna share the project packs with you as well. So this is the first one. This is the most, um, like my focus piece for June. Um, it, the bag is from Crab Shack it's Stitchery. It's one of my favorite project bag uh, makers. Um, they're really reasonably priced uh, the back and the notion pouch they're all you know if you choose you can get the notion pouch as well both um, are $25 and the shipping is free so they have um, um, you can find them on Etsy all right 
So let me share. So this is the focus project I'm working on. Move Forward in Love by Modern Fork Embroidery. Um, I have to say, Jacob is one of my favorite designers. And um, I have a hard time stopping myself from purchasing every single release that he has. <laughs> so um, I'm slowing down because I, in a really short time, I accumulated a lot of, like, I have a good size of a stash uh, when it comes to patterns. So I need to slow down. Um, okay. This is where I am now. And I don't um, use Q-snap or regular hoops. What I use are these um, square nerge um, hoops. They are really taut, um, really great in terms of like being lightweight. They're much lighter than a Q-snap and I was having difficulty holding Q-snap for hours. Um, so these are the great alternative. So I highly recommend them. They come in a few different sizes. This is the medium size. This is the size that I actually love the most. It's, let's see the size. It's number three. Is um, 22, no, oh, what? It's 220 millimeter in 195 millimeter. Yeah, it's metric. All right. So yeah, this is how far I am. Um, I've completely finished the first first two page. I'm working on page three and four together. Um, I am predicting to be able to finish this before the end of month. I love the colors. I love all the designs, the little birds. Yeah, I, I just love it. This is my one of my favorite um, webs now. All right, next, um, these are the, so I use some of the, my early finishes, some of them are those stamped patterns that I finished uh, into project bags, so most of my project bags are uh, what I made. They're not perfect, they're, especially the zipper part, they're not perfect, but they work and yeah, I like to see my um, finishes in a way that are like practical so I can actually use them and touch them all the time. Yeah, as I said, the zipper is not perfect, so this gets this stuck. Yep. This I don't have any pattern to show you because it's like a mystery cell. It's uh, black work. This is the first year I'm actually trying black work. Um, let me take it out of the hoop maybe so you can see it better. Yeah, this is in a smaller one of those nerd hoops. If you see, like there is, they have these ridges. So it's um, ends up being really sturdy when it comes to like um, getting your fabric really taut. Yeah, this is the smaller one. This is number two. So this is the peppermint purple sal that they offer, have been offering once a, like every year. Um, I'm behind like by a month so I have to catch up this is my whip go for this month I have to catch up with um, making sure that I complete um, the month so I think I have to go like on top like a row like this yep and you can see I love to stitch on um, I forgot to actually share what I'm the fabric and thread for the other project 
So the fabric for the last project for Move Forward in Love was exceptional by Fortnite Fabrics. It's 20 count Ada and that's what I prefer. I'm an Ada stitcher so all of my um, projects are on either, majority of them are either 28 or 20 or 18 count Ada um, with the exception of this. This is 16 count Ada in light coffee and uh, the thread that I like to use is um, sulky 12 weight so almost all of my all of my whips now and almost all of my finishes are on Ada 18 count um, with the exception of one or two and then um, the thread that I have used on almost all of them uh, is 12 weight sulky and um, I love how like I can just use one strand of it um, and one strand of it is enough um, you know great coverage on 18 and especially on 20 count okay next project this is another crab shack stitchery bag I love the retro look and I am using these little key tags to basically write down what kind of what project I have housing in each one of these bags so I don't use the vinyl front bags so so this is a project that I have a little bit of mixed feeling about because it's from the company that I don't know how I feel about it they have had some they have had ma made some questionable decisions recently but i purchased this uh, pattern before those decisions were made um so i really don't know if i'm going to continue buying from them or i need to think about it so it's our forest embroidery and the pattern is vintage black sampler or black vintage sampler Okay. I'm not stitching this all in black though. I know it says like black sampler, but I'm not stitching it in black. So this is the largest size of those nerd hoops. Um, and I am almost done with page two. So this is page one. This is page two. I have a few motifs to fill out. And I'm using sulky black and sulky chestnut um, they categorize this as brown but this is dark red to me and i'm stitching it on sky blue this is like a modeled um 18 count ada that i got from some like random um i think i bought this from amazon so it's, it's really stiff but actually i like it yeah, I like this project, but yeah, as I said, I have mixed feeling about the company. And this was my birthday start. Next, another one of my finishes. This is a pattern from Peruvian Flare. I love her designs they are based on traditional uh, Peruvian um, patterns and it's housing my King Kapal style King Kapal Bar Java Stitcher this is uh, a style started by Nitya from Daybreak Stitchery a few of us are working on this yeah, this is like a ship um, ship cloth, if I'm not mistaken. It's a traditional Indonesian pattern. And I'm stitching it on 18 count uh, Fiddler cloth. This is a quick stitch. So this was one month. The top part was another month so each like this is relatively small so 
this uh, border on top is flipped on the bottom so that's how big it, this will end up being it's not that big again I'm using sulky my own conversion this has a lot of fractional stitches but I've been able to accomplish it on uh, fiddler cloth um, it's really easy to pierce it it's not that dense in terms of like fabric so it's really easy to pierce it using um, regular needle I'm not I'm not even using a sharp tip needle I'm using a regular cross stitch needle tapestry needle so if you can see there are a lot of fractional stitches in this I love it and she's um, if I'm not mistaken Nitya is actually planning on doing another um, one of these ship cloths for like next year's so I'm, I'm all for it that one is red which is more of a more of my color so my favorite colors are reds and purples all right this is another one of my bags I finish into a bag it's holding another one of my sows I don't have a cover photo for this one but I bet you have seen it around if you are on Instagram or um, you're watching a lot of floss tubes so this was a sale by Mother Fork Embroidery, um, like 2021 sale, um, fruits of plant, fruit of plenty, but um, I didn't do it last year. I was just new to stitching. I didn't know anything about a lot of different companies. So, but I saw a lot of people working on this on floss tube, and I really wanted to, you know, join in. So I bought the pattern at tail end of the year, and then. I started watching Chris Cross Stitch on YouTube and she and he just uh, paired I think he's doing this sound with a couple more a couple other of st stitchers if I'm not mistaken and they started this still fruit uh, still fresh fruit sow for 2022 so we are stitching it this year this is a 20 count Ada in charcoal and I'm using two um, sulky threads, 12 white sulky threads, uh, red and this, these, uh, you can see this variegated blue and purple and pink that I use as my second. So what I'm doing is, this is something in between version one and version two. So Jacob actually, released two versions of the pattern one was um, a single color so monochrome and then the second one was um, two-toned but I like the look of the monochrome more the way the pattern work but I wanted to do it with two colors so that's what I'm doing so these areas in the two-tone is negative space so you basically stitch the background and you leave the design to show but I actually did the other way just like the monochrome would be so I'm doing everything as if this is monochrome but I'm using two color threads yeah and I'm going to be behind so I was up this is May this should be June but we are getting to the end of June and because I'm working on the other, uh, the pride sale, I'm not going to be able to do this this month. So I have to catch up with it next month. And this is my back. Not bad, huh? And here we go to the last whip that I have. another one of my, my bags so 
So, um, I said that I was working on a stamped project at the beginning of my journey. Um, so I basically have a few of those left. I've done a reverse image search. I did a lot of Googling and looking if to see if I can find the original designer. I have not been able to find a designer that designed these patterns at all. So right now I'm assuming this is a Russian or Chinese designer. That's why I cannot find them. Um, so I decided to still slowly work through my, you know, some of those patterns and not feature them that much. So um, I'm going to show you the whip, one of the one of those patterns, but you're probably not going to see it until not, not see it again until it's all done, basically. So I'm going to try to minimize the number of times I'm actually showing it. And by the way, if you know the designer, let me know. I would love to purchase this pattern from them just to make up for um, the pattern I bought. It's called All Kind of Vegetables. It's pickles. <laughs> Enough said. I love pickles. I'm a huge fan. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Iranian. We do love our pickles. We have, um, you know, really intense love for anything sour or tart. Like, we love it. So, yeah, I love pickling and I love eating pickles. So, I thought this will be perfect for the kitchen area. So, it, it looks a little crazy because of the stamped part. haven't done that much I'm just working my way through this little the background maybe you can see it from the back actually that's how much I have done so far which is not much so it will probably take me forever to finish these but I don't mind because and these are like almost full coverage so that's another thing that it, I'm not a fan of full coverage. I don't have patience for them. All right, so that was all of my whips. So next thing, I'm gonna show you my finishes this year. First, I'm gonna show you all the finishes that I did from other people's designs, and then I'm gonna show you my designs because I'm mother of stitching all of my designs myself. Okay, I'm gonna go try to go by order of when I finish them. All right, so this was the first one. It's a Victorian rose. This background is all a stitch. This is on 14 count Ada. This is like from the the first collection of the stuff that I bought. Yeah. Next thing is this big old thing. The New Normal by Long Dock Sampler. Yep. It's on 18 count light coffee using 12 weight. Um, this is peacock plume, if I'm not mistaken. That's the color of the thread. That's 12 weight sake. I love this. This is the largest project I have completed so far. I really don't know how to finish it, how, how to fully finish it. Next is Loss from Terrace by Bendy Stitchy Designs. 
it's another sulky conversion. I use petite treasure braid for the gold, but the rest is sulky. Next is Matter in Hand by Jeanette Douglas. This is a sulky conversion and I am I actually made some changes to this. So if you see these are words for cross stitching different languages. So I switch three. This says Shomare Duzi. This is cross stitch in Persian or Farsi. This one is cross stitch in Japanese. And this one says Tetris, which is cross stitch in Arabic. Yeah. I love this. I'm thinking this will be a great project bag, really, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, so those were finishes that I did, and they're not like they were not my designs. So let's do a quick round of my designs. This was the first release I had. It's called Persian Love. It says Ishq or love in Persian in the middle. All of my designs are inspired by um, Iranian motifs, um, either architecture motifs or motifs found in different textile or carpet, like Persian carpet. Um, yeah, so that's how. I get my inspiration, where I get my inspiration. This is on 16 count Ada. Do not remember the name of it. And it's a stitch in anchor white. Don't, <laughs> I don't know about the skein, but I use this pool and it's hell is stitching with it. It's very bad. Like, I, I was miserable. This is a small piece, but it took me forever. It would just break apart and turn into this fluff thing. It was so annoying. Next is the first of my series. So I'm uh, working currently on a series called Magical Carpet Menagerie. It's uh, inspired by a, spe a specific uh, type of Persian rock that is um, hand knotted by um, nomadic people of Iran. It's called Gabbe. Um, they have um, no like um, pattern per se. They don't follow any like um, pattern that is like written down or established or anything like that they have like a few motifs that are repeated in different um, gap bays but usually how it's knotted is of um, one's experiences and imagination so there are a lot of as a result there are a lot of weird animals in them <laughs> really weird animals so I decided to um, use a lot of those um, borders that they use plus the animals um, that are there. So some of them are inspired by the animals that I have seen in Gap Bay. I toned down some of them. Like for example, the first design that I did is, this is called Funky Peacock. The original design had six legs. Yeah. I bet the person who knotted this rock had no idea what a peacock looks like. <laughs> anyway, maybe they have read a description of it. They heard about it. I don't know. But they, yeah, there were like six legs for that peacock. So I decided to cut it down to two. <laughs> so it looks less weird. And these are all a stitch on 18 count Ada um, using sulky 12 weight. Different 
um, majority of them are uh, blendables so you can see the variegation in them I have a couple that are stitched in solid color alright so this is funky peacock next one is wonky cat this is one of my favorite designs it's a stitch on 18 count picture this plus um, confetti just look at it look how funky it is and he has swollen hole a bird so there's a birdie in his tummy look at those eyes <laughs> I just love it. Third, in honor of Mother's Day, I came up with Hazy Hen. So this is a hen with her four chicks. And it's up there. Look at that. <laughs> Again, 18 count Ada. Don't know the, the name. I do not remember. These are all listed on Gumroad, so if you want to know more about it or maybe download them, you can go there. All of my designs are available on Gumroad for pay as you wish. Um, um, yeah, under my roomy designs. Mm. I am planning on having each and every of my designs to be there available to be downloaded for free, so the minimum is zero. Um, for six months so by the end of June um, the first design Persian love um, the option to download it for free will will go, go away basically and uh, gradually all of my pattern will have the same um, situation so the next in the series is lanky camel look at that face it looks more like a dinosaur yeah this is another one that I adjusted it it the head looked so weird so weird but I made it less weird yes it's on 18 count picture the plus this plus haunted right next we have giddy crabs this is my on my absolute favorite fabric to be honest this is 18 count doesn't have a name <laughs> this is an 18 count um, hand dyed by Jesse from mislaid pages they have so many different fantastic like they, they eye style their fabric and they look wonderful okay so this is giddy crabs and this is my most recent and my June release this is perky lion on another one of Jesse's hand dyed fabrics. Just look how fantastic of a match this is. I remember the thread for this one. <laughs> this one is 12 weight um, deep woods. Yeah. And this lion is inspired by a motif that is seen a lot in Persian rocks, in different architecture uh, designs and um, tile work um, or fabric printing or even uh, one of our oldest like flag emblems. Um, it's a lion, usually it's a lion and the sun. So this is the sun there is a half sun usually on his back and sometimes he's carrying a sword so sometimes the lion sun and the sword sometimes is just lion and the sun I decided to go with the lion and the sun 
and just look at that toothy grin. I cannot with that. He didn't have a toothy grin in the original design. I decided to give him a toothy grin. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> yep. So this is the most recent one. I, I am currently working on my next design. I'm actually finished. I finished the design and I am working on the model stitching for that. Um, is hoping to finish it before the end of month, but I don't have, I'm not feeling rushed to finish it really soon. I love this one as well. So the plan is, so far I have um, six. That will be, the next one will be my seventh. So the plan is to have nine. All nine are 100 by 100 or smaller. So um, every single one of them are almost, all of them are below 100 by 100 the stitches. Um, so the plan is then to come up with, to release a border. And it's a repetitive border, so you can uh, stretch it, make it a smaller or bigger. And there will be a release of a corner that you can use on four corners. So it's basically assemble it yourself. You can basically do these in two ways. Either stitch all of them on, on one piece of fabric and then go with the border around it and just frame the whole thing. Or what I'm planning to do with mine is which make them more like closer to one of Gap Bay's designs. So one of the Gap Bay designs is patchwork. So you see a lot of like blocks with a motif in the middle and then they're all different colors. So this is what I'm planning to do with mine. So I'm going to basically coat all of these together and then stitch the frame on like in separate pieces and then frame the whole thing um, with that stitch frame. So basically I'm gonna just have the nine piece in the middle and then four pieces of the border for top, bottom, and sides, and then four of those corner borders um, for each of the four corners, and then have them all um, turned into a pillow. My plan is to turn it into a big pillow. Uh, but of course you can do whatever you want with it. And that's my philosophy in design as well. This this is a starting point. So I'm not for call for threads. I'm not for call for fabrics. You do what you want to do with, with the design. It's yours. Be creative. Uh, what I'm showing you as model is just so you see what it will look like um, finished but you can definitely do whatever you want with it and that's how I approach every single pattern myself when I buy a pattern then I um, take the liberty to tweak it or stitch only part of it or um, you know change the wording if I don't like it or um, change the for sure <laughs> change the threads because I mainly work with sulky and that's not the called for for a lot of the design so I usually just change all of it and I encourage you to do the same um, this is just the beginning like when you get the pattern that's your starting point it shouldn't be your end point that's your starting point and do with it whatever you want all right, and lastly, before I wrap this up, I'm gonna show you one of the treasured pieces that I have from my paternal grandmother. She was a quilter, as I shared earlier in the video, and what she did was what is considered here as a scrap quilting which is like you just use a leftover leftover fabrics that you have so you don't throw them away and you turn them into a colt to be honest that's all i knew as a colt back in iran so all colts that i have seen so far before i moved to us have been basically scrap colts 
so she would use leftover fabrics from her clothing because she she used to sew all of her clothes herself so she used all of um, those scraps she used to make a lot of different like um, heat protection like covers and stuff for um, kitchen gadgets um, for herself or to gift to others and then the leftover fabric will be turned into a coat she used a lot of old um, sheets for the backing so she used all the scraps and whatever would be left over of that it would be turned into a stuffing material and she would just stuff pillows and stuff with it and so this is this is one of those cases so I gift was gifted this when I was 10 or oh, no 9 This is a pillow. Every single triangle you see is actually a square, a tiny square that she folded. These are all stitched in hand, all of it. And then made into a pillow. Fantastic thing about this, I remember some of those little pieces as her dress or a pillow case or pajamas that she made for herself I remember them some of them not all of them so it's all I opened the back and it was filled with old like leftover fabric and threads from her quilting and sewing so all of those pieces are a stitch on this is like a few layers of fabric it's thick so I stitched them all by hand on this and this is an old sheet that she cut and turned into a backing so yeah this is a treasure and I used this as a pillow for years for years and years I think I I put it away maybe six years ago I just put it in a in a bag and I didn't want it to because it was really dirty I didn't want it to get damaged so I just put it in a bag set it aside the other day I found it I decided to empty the bag so I opened it I emptied it and then I washed it I was really afraid <laughs> but I'm glad that I washed it because oof, the amount of dirt that came out of this was insane. Um, now I'm planning on closing the back, like getting it really tight and stitching it. And then putting it in one of those um, shadow boxes. So they have like a depth so it doesn't like it's, it's going to frame it but it's not going to squish like all the it's not going to press any of these little pieces together i wanted to stay this 3d as 3d as i can get it and also to protect it and also to have it out so i can actually see it because right now this is tucked away in a bag until i can figure out what to do with it um, so yeah so now that I have shown you this now I can go ahead and close the back and just wrap it up so we can actually so I can actually frame it I might share the framed version later okay so plants um, plans for this channel is once a month upload and if I have a release um, so if I come up with a new design or something else comes up then I will have like extra um, uploads here and there just to cover those but other than that because I don't work on a lot of different whips um, doesn't make sense to have 
videos every week or every other week because I'm not going to have enough progress to actually share with you. I have to do it like once a month just to have something to share. Um, and um, at the end, so it will be all floss to you, but then at the end of each episode, if I have a finish of a diamond painting, I'm going to show, sh- uh, show that and, you know, showcase that. But yeah, this is it. So thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and I hope that you like and subscribe and come back um, toward the end of July when I upload my second video. Or who knows, maybe you see me earlier if I, you know, end up releasing my new design earlier. So maybe you see me earlier than that okay all right um until next time enjoy your stitching time i hope that it's relaxing for you i hope it's enjoyable for you and i hope that it triggers uh curiosity and um also it triggers your creativity as well because i love to see all these finishes and um, other people's whips and also the, the liberty they take on different designs. So I love watching that. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.